Greetings and welcome to an LGR keyboard thing. And this is the Cherry KXN3-8451 infrared keyboard introduced in 1984 at a price of 275 US dollars. And yes, this is a wireless mechanical keyboard from the mid 80s and it's awesome. This was meant not only as a replacement to the IBM PC Jr's infamously awful keyboard from 1983, which originally came with this gummy chiclet abomination and even later on came with one of these which was better yet still not ideal, but it was also sold as a wireless alternative to the IBM PC and XT's 83 key Model F keyboard. So what do you get with this cherry board if you're replacing that wonderful thing? Well, to start with, these keycaps are double shot matte finish ones. They're also cast in a shape that makes them a little bit shorter and lower profile than IBM's keys. So while your fingers won't be bouncing up and down quite as much, they still feel comfortable and they're laid out in such a way that anyone used to an IBM PC keyboard of the time will feel pretty much at home. Speaking of layout, this is not the traditional 83 key IBM PC keyboard, but instead this has 84 keys, and I admire the way that they advertised it as having an enhanced layout, with shift in the proper position, a horizontal return key, and an extra return key. And you know, I'm inclined to agree with them. I personally do prefer a horizontal return key as opposed to the vertical one on the Model F, and the shift on the left hand side of the keyboard is indeed at the proper position. And that extra return over on the numpad is where the 84th key comes in. A handy thing indeed for the numpad addicted. As for underneath the keys, well this is where the mechanical stuff happens. These are Cherry MX Blacks, or rather some early variant of them that were introduced the same year as this keyboard in 1984. And as you can see from this Cherry advertisement of the same year, there were several different types available, but the ones on here are linear switches, there is no tactile or audible click, and they're somewhat stiff, taking about 75 grams of force to press down. Now that could just be due to the age and condition of these particular switches since they're supposed to be only 62 grams according to Cherry. Either way, 1984 MX Black's pretty good stuff. And in case you're wondering about the space bar, yes it does take more force to press down as you might expect, at a little over 80 grams in this case. But unlike later boards with MX Black's installed, this does not use a linear gray switch underneath the space bar, instead it's another MX Black just with a splotch of red paint, presumably to indicate it's for the space bar. And inside of that is a slightly stiffer spring. Now one thing I'm always looking for on mechanical boards is in key rollover, which refers to the limit or lack of limit for simultaneous key presses. And according to Cherry's ad for this board, it boasts pseudo in key rollover. I don't know exactly what they mean in this exact context. I've seen some companies that say that and they're actually referencing 18 key rollover, but regardless, it is not a full NKRO keyboard. So there is some kind of limit here for simultaneous key presses. And being that it's a wireless board, let's check out the battery situation, and this takes four AA batteries in this removable tray underneath. And the company seemed quite proud of what they pulled off here with their quote, state-of-the-art CMOS electronic components and special circuitry that would only draw power when a key is pressed, extending battery life up to one million keystrokes. Around the rear of the unit you'll see these little circular things here, these are the infrared ports, which will transmit to a PC Junior, and it is indeed compatible with the Junior's integrated infrared receiver, but it also included a cord to plug in the back of the machine for wired usage. And these cords with the RJ11 on one end and the PC Junior connection on the other are really hard to find nowadays, so I'm happy this came with it. However, to use this on a PC XT or compatible, you just flip this switch underneath from junior to senior. <laughs> yeah, there's officially no such thing as a PC senior, but they just called it that anyway and I think it's cute. And to get it working with the senior, you'll also need the optional Cherry 0B99-13AL interface which provides you both an infrared receiver and a converter for the PC Junior keyboard cable to plug it into the 5-pin DIN connection of the PC XT keyboard port. Now it was Cherry's claim that the wireless mode would function at up to 20 feet at an angle of up to 50 degrees, providing you have complete line of sight and no electrical or optical interference. 
And while I've had problems with interference and in infrared keyboards before, like I used to use CFL light bulbs to light my scenes, and when I did a review of the original PC Junior version of King's Quest, that caused all sorts of problems. Yeah. To counteract this a bit, the receiver box also has this switch on the bottom to choose between high and low modes, which reduces the reception range and in turn reduces the potential for outside interference. And finally, you also get two manuals with the full package here, one for the PC Junior compatible keyboard and one for the PC interface box. Now, these not only provide some excellent technical information, but plenty of troubleshooting tips for when things inevitably go weird with the infrared side of the equation. Pretty much, if things are beeping like crazy, you've done something wrong and it's gonna need fixing. But yeah, let's go ahead and hook this thing up and give it a try. I've got a PC Junior and a PC Senior at the ready, so let's get to it. Brack. All right, so I've got the PC Junior turned on here and batteries in the Cherry Infrared keyboard. And well, moment of truth, that is the infrared receiver built into this thing. And of course it has its own uh, transmitting. So <laughs> yeah, that works perfectly fine. It seems even yeah, right up close, which is good. Definitely don't have in key rollover. <laughs> it's not even accepting that at all, at least not on the PC Junior. But we can run a classy basic program. Let's try something else here. Ooh, I don't know if it caught it. No. There we go. Man, you gotta love the sound of that disk drive. Okay, so uh, yeah. We can do DOS things. All right, so we know that it works. Another thing I wanna test is the distance. And remember, Cherry said that this would work at a distance of up to 20 feet with no interference. I don't actually have a room in my house that is 20 feet long, but I can get pretty close to that. I'm walking, let's see, about 15 feet. This might be about 20 feet. I'm all the way two rooms away through a couple of doorways, through the hallway, and it appears to be working. I can't actually see from here. I mean, I can see from here, but it's just blurry even with glasses because eyesight. And yeah, yeah, there we go. I see the disc reading in there. And yeah, that absolutely seems to work without a hitch. And I've got all sorts of lights and objects in the way and my camera and tripod. We're in the line of sight. So this is pretty darn impressive. Seems to do everything Cherry said that it would. And just to verify what I already know, but maybe someone's curious, yes, the cable that it came with does work with the original PC Junior, uh, rather unfortunate <laughs> chiclet keyboard right here, as well as the updated PC Junior keyboard with the slightly nicer keys and mechanism, but still nowhere near the mechanical goodness of the Cherry keyboard. But uh, yeah, you can kind of see here actually, as far as the key shape and everything, what they were really going for with the Cherry. Of course, the mechanism you get here isn't nearly as nice as what you get on the Cherry board. It's just that little rubber dome, with the membrane underneath. But that's definitely the feel overall that they were going for with the Cherry board. Uh, speaking of this, once again, let's head on over to an IBM PC XT and see how it works with that. All right, so now I have it plugged into the PC Senior XT, I guess they would call it. And to start with, I'm just gonna try it in the wired mode with the box just plugged in directly uh, to the computer and then that plugged in directly to this. And then we'll try it wireless afterward. At the moment though, I just want to see if indeed it works and it seems to. I just want to see if it converted over correctly to this XT and I mean, you know. So far, so good. Typing seems just fine, fine. I missed a space there, but yeah, that space is seriously heavy. Okay, I assume we're going to have to turn the computer off in order to get the wireless enabled. All right, no beeping so far, that's good. Hmm. 
that's not doing anything from right here. Sensitivity is on high. Not that it necessarily needs it being this close. I'm assuming that it's just the angle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, good. Let's see where... Yeah. If the sensor is up there, I, might, I really should put the sensor off to the side to get this to... Okay. <laughs> it still doesn't. You have to like... Oh my goodness. I need a way bigger desk. Will this work? That works. Yeah, great. So with my limited desk space, I had to move the computer over here, put the IR receiver over there, put the legs down, and then this, this works. It's about as close as I can get the keyboard and still have it pick up. And granted, I mean, it's working pretty great at this point. This is fine. Well, let's do something on here. Got burger time. Here. <laughs> okay. Yay, burger time. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, keyboard. It's fine. Works. Works fine. Uh, well, let's try one other thing because I was told that I could. Yeah, man. So that's pretty much it for this keyboard. It's a vintage mechanical, better than some of the alternatives that were around back then. But honestly, there were so many really well-made keyboards at the time, and it's just like, this is just one of them. The thing that really makes this special is, of course, it's an early cherry. And the fact that it's, you know, <laughs> PC Senior and PC Junior compatible is just a lot of fun. I don't have any other keyboards uh, like that. Kamikaze mission. Come on, guys. There we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it for this episode of LGR. And I hope that you enjoyed a look at a keyboard, of all things. I mean, it's just a keyboard, right? But honestly, I like just keyboards. Especially when they have some sort of unique attributes, whether they be an early version of something that is now a bit more iconic, like a Cherry MX Switch, or it's wireless and compatible with multiple systems, or it's just a well-built keyboard. I might cover some more in the future if you like this. Either way, though, uh, I had fun, and I hope that you did too. Feel free to check out some of my other videos on vintage computery things right here. And there are new videos of all kinds every Monday and Friday on LGR. And as always, thank you very much for watching.